We are built for this network for the strong, not the weak. Nope, I ain't starting yet. I'm back and I'm still not starting. Okay, I finally started. We back. We in business. All right, we got a full house tonight. I want to salute everybody who's in the chat room. Salute, salute, salute. I want to thank you for tuning in to Build for This Network. This is the End of the Bench Podcast. I am HRAP B. Thank you for tuning in. We got a full house. Uh, this is Build and Destroy, where we attempt to build up the community, destroy anything that's negative, any, all, only thing we accept is positivity. You already know this is a podcast. I'm rushing because I got a lot of people, and some people are cramped for time. Therefore, you know where you can get us at. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, AHA Radio, Google Podcasts, um, CastBox, Deezer, Amazon, Podcast Addict, Spreaker.com, YouTube, Built for This Network, and right here, the End of the Bench Podcast. You know how we do it. We get down. I got good people. We got a good topics. And like I said, some people are pressed for time. I want to salute the people in the chat room. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that alert button. That way I ain't got to send you the notification every week. And you can just, it just pop up on your phone. And you be like, what is this? And you'll dismiss it. And you say, oh, damn, that's me. But anyway, I have, as usual, Ray the Kev at the top middle. I have Charlotte on the right. I got my man Tran. And I got my girl Sin. We about to have an interesting conversation, an interesting conversation. We're going to talk about accountability in regards to our community, not personal accountability, but communal account- accountability. What is expected? What should we be doing? The questions are interesting, I think, and I hope everybody else found them interesting. So with that being said, hello, panel. Hello, supporters. Let's get it cracking. Now, with that being said, first question right out the box, because I got some people who are pressed for time. I want to, I really want to get some of their opinions. They, you know, they they, they extended themselves to me, so I'm going to take it to them. We know the history of our community. You know the history of the black community in the, in the United States of America. Who should be held accountable for the state of the community? Lack of businesses, uh, lack of information about our history, and lack of property. Thing, you know, things like property and things of that nature. Who should be held accountable for those things? I'm going to go backwards, Sand, Trans, Charlotte, Ray Kev, 
ears on everybody. Hey, everybody. Um, accountability. I think initially, um, our captors should be accountable uh, because we didn't, we weren't allowed to know our history. You know, we so removed from where we originally came from. That part of our history is almost like it doesn't even exist. Um, but however, moving forward uh, into present times, we probably could be held accountable for ourselves. Because I can still remember times when my my grandfather and grandmother, you know, worked their butt off to buy property. You know what I'm saying? And they told us, hey, you need to buy land, you need to buy houses. But we don't really share that in common no more with these kids. You know, I be trying to tell my sons, hey, you know, like I said in the last podcast I was in, stop buying these Jordans and putting diamonds in your teeth and go buy a building. You know, go invest in something. Go uh, make you a business. You know, uh, license yourself. You know, and, and then teach that to your kids. Because that's what we're not doing at this point. So the only ones who can be, okay, so at this point in history, the only ones who can be held accountable now would be us for not spreading that information not trying to uh, collaborate with each other and going to buy a car or going to buy a, a mall or going, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. going to buy us some land and teaching, you know, learning how to farm. and You know, like there's so many things we could be doing, but we just not. We just not. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Trey Mack, what's good, man? Talk to me. What's happening, man? So I would say, you know, based on – education that we got, you know, the, the system that that, that uh, has held us captive all these years is responsible for that. Because at some point, you know, like I had to learn myself beyond what I, you know, you know, I, I was forced to go to school first through eighth and, uh, you know, ninth through twelfth. That wasn't my decision, right? So, you know, my parents sent me off and they gave me the education that they gave me. But I always tell everybody I got more education, you know, not being in a structured environment or a school environment and learn more about myself uh, after I, I finish doing all that, right? But uh, but like the young lady said before me, you know, we, we got enough knowledge at this point, right? We got enough uh, resources to, to find a better way for ourselves, like just for me. And I can only go by the way I came up. You know, my mother and father, they did what they could. But after they, you know, did everything they could do for me and they gave me the tools I needed, I went on. I was the first in my family to get a degree. I was the first in my family to, to own uh, property. You know what I mean? So I took what they gave me and I moved on. And, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I can only use what they, what they gave me as a, a blueprint for my kids to hopefully be able to do the same. And I'm, of course, not all of them will, but at least I know I gave them the tools to move on. And, and you know, uh, uh, you know, if it's self-education or finding, you know, about who we are as a people, then that's what we have to do independently for ourselves. And we have to encourage that for the next generation. Charlotte. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me on. I love learning, and this is a wonderful panel. I've learned from every single person on this panel, and I appreciate um, all of you. So I'm in total agreement with San and Tran. Um, The people who established our educational system still control that educational system and the things that, you know, we're told to teach our children and our students, and this has gone on since it's existed um and so i you know they still control a lot of things and we've had this discussion before um and so i feel like the initial um fault lies with them but just like sin and trans said you know everybody on this panel despite having gone through that biased educational system right has taken the time to get their own knowledge right, to go outside of that box and to find the truth that we're not able to teach the kids. Um, And so at this point, I I totally 
totally agree with Seneca. You know, it's on us. We can't, you know, just accept, right, what's handed to us as truth. And we can't just accept um, the things that are done. And if we want to see a change, we have to go outside the box. We have to want that motivation and put that effort in um, and get the knowledge that we need. And then, again, also um, get out of that, you know, what's in it for me mentality and as we've also said before come together as a community you know um and just as that mentor these you know, young people you know i continue to have these conversations right about even the way our parents discipline us and the way that has changed with this generation and now so many parents would rather be friends with their children than to really parent um and so we need to go back to the things you know that work we need to stop trying to be friends with our children and teach them the right way right and give them that guidance that they need in their structure um and so i feel like right now it's a combination of the two we have to be willing to put in the work and the effort um and get the knowledge that we need and then put all that knowledge into action okay kevin you up
Man, awesome answers by everybody. Only thing I would like to add is this. Uh, what I'm going to say is probably piss like 90% of the people who support me off. But I blame us 100% at this point. The reason I blame us 100% at this point is because of what Seneca said. And, I'm, and, and the reason I can speak like this is because I was, I'm a victim of what I'm saying. Seneca mentioned that, you know, everybody mentioned the people who captured us. In my opinion, a hundred years ago, I'll give it a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, that stopped. They're still, they're still accountable for what they did to us. Don't get me wrong. But we, I believe, especially our generation, everybody on this panel's generation, I think we dropped the ball. We were the first generation, in my personal opinion, and I looked at it historically, that had that, like, my, me and my man Tran, like, we're not, like, I'm not the first person in my family to get a degree, but I'm the first person of my mother, my parents' children to get a degree, right? I'm the first person of my generation. My mom went to school. Her brothers, sisters went to school. So, that, you know, they're, they're educated, right? But they weren't expected to go to school. It was, a, it was a totally different world that they lived in. They lived in a world of survival. Like, hey, we got to do this. We got we to gotta work hard. Around 65 to, to now, we were expected to move forward and go to school. And and uh, I put a book on Facebook today, Less, uh, 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 Less School, More Education. And I think what we did was ignore, as Seneca said, her parent, all of our parents and their parents were taught to get property. And they shared that with us. And I think we were busy assimilating. I've been saying this for at least 10 years. They used Dr. King dream against us like a pit bull. Because, you know, Dr. King was saying, hey, man, we have the right to do these things. We have the right to do this. And I think we stopped saying I have the right. And then we felt like we were obligated to do those things. Like here in Chicago, one of the biggest uh, 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 shopping chains at the time was Marshall Field. I'm going down there. They're going to take my... I've literally heard older people and people in my age group say, hey, man, I went down there. They wouldn't They wouldn't serve me, so I made them serve me. Well, we shouldn't have been making them serve me, serve us. Like Fashion Fair uh, Cosmetics, created by Bob Johnson. Personally, I think instead of Bob Johnson getting Marshall Fields to put his thing in there, he should have created his own get down. You know, he should have created his own store and had black people all over the country... I think we've been too busy assimilating to the, to the status quo instead of creating our own. And our ancestors and their ancestors, that's what they did. You know, Wilmington, North Carolina. I, we went through those cities a million times. During, during Reconstruction, we took over. We, we even had other, other communities starving because we were the only agricultural geniuses in North America. But what we did was we dropped our history we listened to their propaganda, and we said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I can work at IBM instead of creating our own IBM. I can work here instead of doing our own. We went from 90% literacy, 93% literacy in 1960, uh, less than 100 elected officials in 1960, and 50% property ownership in 1950 to 7% property ownership 40% literacy, and 10,000 elected officials. So the more we assimilate into the situation, the, the worse off we get. If anybody want to retort to that, I'm open to it, but that's just the way I see it. You know, I'm going to hold us 100%, especially my generation. What, what are we, Generation X, y'all? We X? I would say X. Yeah, I think X dropped the ball. Anybody want to retort to that? Anybody got anything to respond to that? Thoughts? Well, you know, I, I think one of the reasons is because I think our parents more led us toward getting a good job mm -hmm. um, and, and Lord, uh, Lord Jesus trying to uh, assimilate into the society the way Martin Luther King was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Ideas wasn't wasn't pushed to us, so that's why we didn't 
try to achieve those, you know. But I think times have changed. I think that's why we got to change our way of thinking and our way of teaching our children and teach them not to try to, to become, uh, and I, I hate to say slave, but, you know, slave for someone else, slave for yourself. And I think that's, that's the difference. It's the way we were brought up. And to echo your sentiments, Benita put, I blame white supremacy 100%. Because every time we build up, it insists uh, and insists work hard and enthusiast they enthusiastically destroy everything we build. That is true. That's uh, that's ultimately true. And I just I just want to take total comp, uh, accountability for what we've done. The fact that they've destroyed things, um, I think we should learn from the destruction of our uh, our situations. We should build an infrastructure that can't be destroyed. Other communities, I, I, and I do believe it's because other communities, we, we, we continue to inculcate other people into our situation. Instead of just, look, it's, it's the barter system. You got what I need. I, I do what you need, and we exchange. I think we continue to say, okay, it's cool now. Let our guards down, and then they get us. Um, again, if anybody wants to retort that, I'm open. The floor is open to you. But I don't think any of us are wrong. It's just, again, it's open for the conversation. I need the conversation to happen as much as possible. And as long as we continue to do this, things will continue to erode. You know, the defeatist portion of our community will erode, in my opinion, and we will continue. But then, at that point, we will build and destroy anything that stands in our way. With that being said, how should we hold corporate America accountable? We talk about accountability here tonight. We just talked about our accountability and we pour, we over index in most areas. We made Facebook pop because Facebook was really to troll girls on college campuses. These two nerds, and I'm going to call them nerds, they millionaires now, but two nerds went to Mark Zuckerberg and said, hey, we want to rate the girls in the New England area at all the schools, at the Browns and the Harvards and those schools and the Princetons and things of that nature. So we're going to create an app for this. He took it and turned it to Facebook. It was just a it was just a meager app. Next thing you know, we get on it, explode. Twitter is the same. Instagram is the same. TikTok, uh, what was it? Divine, uh, uh, um, and and the Clubhouse went from a ten million dollar situation to a billion dollar situation the moment we got in and, and 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 put ten fingers and ten toes on the ground. I'm gonna go Tran, Seneca, Charlotte, Kev, and then back to me. Tran, speak on it, bro. You there? Well, like, for one, like, I would say out of being the ultimate customer, we the ultimate customers for everybody, mm -hmm. right? And, and, you know, we can never, I can't say we can never, but I'm just saying, like, we comfortable being customers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this chain I got. Look at the Gucci sandals, the, the glasses, the dime. Oh, we come, we, we buy every, no matter how bad they treat us, we put money into their pocket. Like, we have to have, for us, right, we have to say, all right, enough is enough. I can go spend, you know, the same amount of money or even less money to help my brother or sister that has a business or offer the same products or services that this other company, you know, is more prestigious because white people, you know, been wearing it and it's on TV for all our lives. And that's the stuff that we, you know, we always see those brand names, but... You know, they, they, they are accountable, but I'm just saying for us, we have to, you know, we have to find a way to get out of the, the uh, just being customers and being happy being customers, mm -hmm. right? And then being customers that I don't even treat well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, you know what I'm saying? We have to get out of that. And, and you know, we it has to be something within us. You know, again, we have to teach and we have to learn that, you know, that, that's not doing us as a whole any good, being customers. We have to be the entrepreneurs. We have to have an entrepreneurial spirit, which, for me, I've seen it more as as I get older, you know, with, with, with more people around me, more on my own, more in my community. I start their own business and having that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, spirit you know what I mean? And, 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 and like I say, like we was just talking about, you know, who has to have a, accountability. This is kind of the same thing because why would you you know the people that's making all the money off of, of us and at the same time you know not respecting us but taking our money
money, why would they do anything different? Like, why would we, like, like how could they be held accountable while we still spending money with them? It makes no sense. They uh, consistently make, you know, uh, products that, uh, you know, that disrespect us that we feel like, oh, my goodness, well, how could you do something like that? Right? And they making money off it. And it'll be a big controversy. Then after that, you know, Gucci, whoever, anybody, you know, it's the same thing. But I'll I just say, on this point, I can't blame the, the corporations because that, that's the business. Uh, 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 corporate America is vicious to everybody. If you white, black, whoever you are, you know, by any means necessary, that's how they take care of their business. And they, however they become successful and stay successful, they have to do whatever it takes to get to that point. We have to, we have to try to learn and try to uh, re-educate our own selves that being a customer is not the best thing. Just because I buy the most expensive thing don't make me the, you know, the most popular guy or don't make me cool, right? We have to, it, it, to me, it has to be within us first to, to change our, uh, our perspective as far as am I going to consume this or am I going to be the guy that sells this product to the people that I know that would appreciate it? You know what I mean? So once we can add, uh, not to skip the plot, but for me, I'm seeing that. I have a lot of friends that are doing stuff. Even you with this podcast, that's an example of it. You know what I mean? You're setting up a platform where we can express these type of ideas. We need all these platforms for everybody, for every industry, right? Even no matter how small it is. That's how it started, something small. But we have to just kind of reteach ourselves not to just be the dude to go to the, you know, corn and buy the weed every every day. Go go get the weed and sell it to the other people that want the weed. Like, it can start, it can start small, and I ain't just saying weed, I'm just saying, because weed is legal, <laughs> where I'm at, right? But I'm just saying, we have to uh, try to teach and try to, you know, uh, 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 reteach our own selves that we can't just be the ultimate goddamn customers, because we buy everything from every, we spend the most money on everything, right? Mm-hmm. We, that that got to change. We got to be able to go, but that's not how we taught, though. We, we don't go to school to be taught how to be an entrepreneur. You get taught how to be a worker and to work for somebody else. You don't get taught how to solve problems, right? You get taught how to go in there and, okay, I got the house, I got the degree, I got the white picket fence, I'm married, I got the dog, I got, you know, we, we, we still try to live an American dream, but it was never our own dream, right? The King's dream done got crisscrossed, and now we here trying to live a, 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 a dream that was designed for us to fail in the first place. So if we could, you know, somehow reteach, because that's what it is to me, you know, corporate America is going to always be what it is. I don't care if it's a, a black person that own the biggest business, they going to act the same way the rest of the corporations act so they can survive. So they're going to do the same thing and you and use the same tactic that will hurt us for them to make a profit. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's within us, and that's where it goes back to accountability. We just have to teach and have to relearn, you know, what it is and what we want to be. And we got to get out of being uh, uh, ultimate customer. Love it. Only thing I would disagree is, I don't think it's our nature to, uh, to do the... Uh... The capitalism thing. I, I really don't think it is because uh, even when you look at the Black Wall Streets of the world, the Liberty Cities of the world, the Wilmington, North Carolinas, when we got down, we did right by each other. So that's the only thing I would disagree with. Everything else. Okay, I would, let, let me just say this. Let me just say this. And I, I, I'll leave it at that. When you look at record labels, right? Mm-hmm. I'll be doing the people the same way that any other white label would do his own, they own anybody, right? You know, five heartbeats, Red did the five heartbeats, that's <laughs> Puffy right now. Right. Current. So you can't, it ain't just a blank, oh, uh, we won't do that. We, no. No, I, we will do that. No, 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 no. I don't, I'm not saying in a perfect, a perfect situation, Trey. I'm not saying that because even though he, look, okay, we go, we go Diddy, right? And people say Diddy is screw you, but Shug was known as a monster, but I never heard him screwing over anybody. And I heard him, he was always financially taking care of people. Easy e was financially taking care of people. He fell out of, out of, he got out of the trick. Jay Prince took care of people. Uh, 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 Master P took care of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's four out of five. 
Russell Simmons, you don't hear about Russell Simmons screwing people. Well, okay. No, nah, hey man, hey Trey, Trey. That's, that's a whole other conversation. No, it ain't. I Speak you, on it. That. I give you that, but I'll give you my example. You gave me a counter example. We we'll leave it at that. Okay. No, nah, just if you if you got something to say, it's it's it, the floor is yours. It's no big deal. I mean, it's, it's the of point. Course, of course, I'm I'm just gonna leave that alone because we can keep on going on that. So okay. I'll, I'll let you have it. You got it. You're right. Maybe, maybe, like you said, maybe we'll do something like that in the future. Maybe that's that might be some more topics. Tell you what, you come up with four questions and we'll do that one. Right, right. My man. Uh, Seneca, let's do it. That's cool. That's cool. We can rock that. Sold out. Huh? Sold out. That's what I'm saying. One United, though. One United. If you're looking for a black bank, go online. One United. You know what I'm saying? Where everybody got their money at right now? I can tell you where my hand is. It's that Bank of America. You know, and that's, that, that's, that's from, you know, what I didn't learn. You know, my money ain't in the black bank. So that's not helping none of us. Your money may not be in the black bank. It ain't helping none of us. That's not helping invest in us. Let's put our money together and invest in somebody else's business. Are we really doing that? We're not doing that. So how can we hold them accountable when we're not even holding ourselves accountable for what we're doing? True that. If you're looking for a black bank, one you're lining is the largest black owned, black run, black bank in America. And yes indeed, they own that. They own it. They own here, right here. And I got a cool credit card. I mean my debit card got a, a, a Zulu chief on it. And you got the Harriet Tubman on it. And you got the Black Wall Street on it. So yeah, yeah, they supporting us. They doing the thing. And they, and actually they're making a lot of major moves. Uh I listen to a show frequently in which the president of that bank is on and people call in and they were slapping her around on customer service and they've up there. And now when, when she started doing it, they had a 40% approval rate on their customer service. Now they're up to 90. So they listening, they paying attention and they, and they are investing in small black businesses. So listen to Seneca and do what she said. Otherwise, Kayete, zip it. Charlotte, <laughs> literally had this answer ready <laughs> as well and that is um, the power of our dollars you know we, that movement you know boycotting doing whatever but just like Tran and Seneca had already said we, we're too comfortable um, going with the flow you know keeping up with the Joneses even when we can't really keep up right sacrificing home ownership to rent know in order to keep buying those things that transit Gucci and whatever and I still remember uh in the NZ's how popular Tommy Hilfiger was amongst our people and you know he openly scoffed at us right he said look at these black people he's one of the racist more racist people I have ever heard speak and was literally you know laughing all the way to the bank on our dollars so I truly think um Incorporating going back a little bit to question number one as well. Um, we need to stop being complacent. We need to stop being the customers, as Trans said. Um, and 
our children need that financial literacy as well as the civic education. I can tell you I'm doing my part on the civic education. CPS has, you know, put me in that position. I'm a civics teacher with the eighth grade students. Uh, I'm trying to tell them, you know, they don't have to wait until they're adults. They have voices now. Um, when we were in high school, we were fortunate enough to have a consumer ed class. I didn't know anything about the stock market. Are you kidding? Nobody in my family knew anything about that. Investing, um, CDs, you know, any type of saving other than, you know, under the mattress. So even putting money in a bank, um, things like that. My, my parents did not have a checking account. They did have a savings account. So we ran to the currency exchange, right? Currency exchange also charges a fee, right? So again, all these little ways, our money isn't really coming back to us, but continues to go to those communities. So I think that financial literacy, civic education is key. Um, and starting with the young ones, but even educating each other. Um, so I know Brian will send me a text. He was telling me earlier about that GameStop thing. I didn't have an idea what he was talking about. I was like, what, what, are, you, what are you trying to say? <laughs> He's like, quick, invest in this now because it's going to change tomorrow. Yeah. I didn't know how to do that. He even gave me the name of the app, and I'm an educator, right? I'm supposed to know these things. I was like, I'm totally lost. So all of that is, is awesome. But, yes, and not just supporting our black business like Seneca said, um, but also, you know, taking a stand and creating our own, as Brian and Raider Kev have both done, you know, with their um, networks as well, and I appreciate you, and just being willing to support one another, I think that's key, you know, but definitely the dollars, we already know, right, that that's going to hurt, that little time that we boycotted the NFL over Kaepernick, you know, they felt the sting, right? And Four then, billion dollars. Yes. So I definitely think that money is powerful, even if we don't have access to it, you know, in the system the way it is. But yes, we have to be willing to change it. We have to step up and do what needs to be done. Ready to care. It's your turn. Let me interrupt you. They actually do have Zelle. You just have to download the Zelle app for now. They're working on it now.
Yeah. Go along to get along. And if once we understand that, then we can hold corporate America responsible. Then we can hold um, the music industry responsible. Because if we take our dollars out of certain areas, look, everybody complain about, you know, certain rap, right? Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Don't, don't involve yourself with it. If you want to, if you want a certain type of Yeah, I totally agree with everyone. Uh, and, and like like I said, uh, corporate America, meaning the music industry. I'm so thank you for doing that because I sure left that off. Music industry, music, music, movies, businesses, and things of that nature. I, but I personally believe we can do one more thing. I will add this to you guys' point. I think, see, as Kev just said, we, if we start communicating more, we start interacting more. You know, and, I, and it's not a self-promotion. Start tuning in here more and putting things in the chat room more. What we'll do is spark ideas. There are certain things that we know we know nothing about that are just sitting there waiting on us. What they do is offer things that we never go get. And because we're ignorant to those things, we never go get them. And then they sit there and then they get the tax break because they say we offer it. They just never came and got it. It's a million and one business programs. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, so me, oh, Seneca said she hated that she couldn't finish, but man, it's all good. Man, I appreciate her being here because she always asks something wonderful. But what we had to do is start like everybody is uh, uh, like, hey man, these kids going out getting these PPA and the PPP loans and these small business loans. Those loans are there three billion strong every year. Those grants and loans are there three billion strong. If you go on the Small Business Association website right now, there are over $3 billion in contracts, government contracts that you can apply for with no experience. Uh, I, again, I listened to this program and a man came on and he is a millionaire because he keeps going back there and getting those contracts. One dude in Baltimore right now, and see this is why as Kel said, Kel said, we need to communicate more. One dude in Baltimore right now, y'all ready for this? He got a million and a half dollar contract to count COVID patients at a hospital. That's it. Those things are sitting there waiting on it, and that's what we had to do. That's how we make corporate America pay. That's how we make the United States federal government pay and things of that nature. That small business association, SBA.com or org, I don't, I, don't think, I don't remember what it is, but if you look up SBA, it's coming up, and then, and I looked on there, and I was like, oh, damn. And, and even my lazy ass, I didn't do nothing about it. In regards to the stock market, uh, I got a dude coming on to help us. Now, here's a hint. This Here's something that everybody, especially you, Trey, because you got three boys. If you got grandkids, if you got young people in your life, and you got money that you can donate, open up, go to your financial institution. Please look into what is called a Target IRA. Target IRA. A target IRA is, it, for all intents and purposes, is a is a 
Uh, it's kind of like a full 1K, right? But what you can do is pick a date on it. Uh, like, how old is your oldest boy, Tran? I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, 16. I'll, I'll turn the mic off. 16. Oh, okay, 16. Like, if you would, well, how old is your youngest boy? He, he, he four years old. So that's what, 2033? He'll be getting out of high school? 33, 34? Oh, you can I'm, get. Long time. I ain't, I ain't thought that part on Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, like, okay, we got we got to 2000, whatever. And you can put, that's your target date, right? And you can put 10. Like, believe it or not, man, according to. Uh, uh, Financial experts, or these people who call themselves financial experts, if you put five dollars in a day into the stock market, you'll probably in twenty years you will have more money than you ever thought because it will grow monthly at that rapid rate. But a target IRA, you put money in for all three of your boys, right? Let's say, let's say they were all stair step, uh, three, six, eight, right? And if you to put money in when they that, and then just the day of their graduation day, graduation day, they're going to get a check. Now you have a young man, like like you said earlier, all of some of us gonna want to go get jobs. That's just who we are. I, I don't want to own my own business. I don't want the pressure. So, but guess what? He go, but he he a college kid. He got two or three hundred k in his hand. And he can do whatever the hell he want to do with it. You see what I'm saying? And then your other boy, oh, hey, Dad, I don't want to go to, I don't want to go to college. I want to start my own business. Now he got money for that. Or one of them just say, hey, man, I want to buy me a house. And he go buy a house. And then he become a, a landowner. These are the things that we need to start investing in like that. You know, Target IRA. If you have young people in your life, please invest in a Target IRA. You might be, because what happens is this. They start off at age, let's say you start off at age at the birth. And you put in twenty five dollars a month in there, and they invest it aggressively. And then the closer they get to birthday eighteen or whatever the target date is, they slow down so you won't lose. And then you hand them a check when they're a specific age. That's yours, son. What's this for, Dad? Whatever you want it to be for. Now instead of going into the world short on debt, I mean long on debt. He might be a create like you. You're a creative. You're an MC. You're a storyteller. You can flip words and bounce words around. One of those boys is going to have that ability. But he might have it in just creative writing. So he might be able to write a, a movie. He might be the next Spike Lee. He might be the next Tyler Perry. He might be a tech giant. And I don't need y'all to learn these things. So... Y'all right, man. We the way the best way you do the best way you get corporate you hold corporate America accountable is to invest investigate them, find out what they giving out because they giving out a lot. We just don't, especially black women, and do like white men do. Uh, well, affirmative action was built for us, and white men use white women to take advantage of affirmative action. I think they said sixty or seventy percent of affirmative uh, affirmative action money goes to white women. So, all these brothers out here with, with, with long-term partners and wives, your wife ain't got to be creative. All she got to do is say, yeah, it's mine. And you run it. And, and, and Mr. Brown is running it. Or Mr. Johnson is running it. Or Mr. 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 Williams is running it. He worked for me. And his really his idea. And he exercising it. So, that's what we have to do. Corporate America has a lot out there to offer. Coca-Cola, when I used to be an admissions advisor... Coca-Cola is giving away goo gobs. You would be, I, I, what I did when I was admissions advisor is create one. I, I wish I still had it too because I created an email with about 75 organizations that starting off at 10 grand. My, one of, I sent it to one of my mom's friends. She started applying it. My mom said before she transitioned, her home girl used those links I got and paid for her daughter's college. Just kept applying. Sometimes all it takes is, can I have that money? They, they want you to write an essay, and they give you $1,500, $1,000. But just imagine, if you do that 100 times, right. you got $100,000, and your kid is debt-free. So, yeah, this is what that's, this is why I created this. This is why I, I, I transitioned from talking about sports, then talking about community empowerment, 
and went back to really this is the original idea for my show but there was going to be four people four or five six people talking about sports but because I, I wanted different varying opinions and that's why I created this so we can talk because that's to me the biggest problem in our community is nobody talks we just be like yeah yeah you know uh, what, the, 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 the white man need to stop okay how are you going to stop you going to stop you know and that's it or, or you get the, or you think you know everything. Either way, we we still losing, man. So, man, I love everything y'all have said. Man, what's the third question? I, I, I want to know before you go past that. Okay. Uh, uh, once I, you know, once I got with my wife before I even had a kid, uh, she had a daughter, and since since her daughter was born, and it's the same thing that they going with my son. For $500 a year, and they look Gerber, baby, fun, whatever. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? And my my uh, my uh daughter turned 21, whatever, or it's when they get 18, or we just decide 18 to 21, whatever it is. But regardless, you know, she got 20 stacks. Yep. Ready for her. You know what I'm saying? And yep. The, the, the baby boy has got the same thing. Yes. For them. So I didn't know anything about the. Uh, targeted IRA, mm -hmm. but the, the, it's the same type of yes. You know, uh, because that's something my mama never did for me, but and my wife actually taught me that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I would gladly invest in every year, you know. So by the time they get twenty one or whatever age we decide, then you got a you got a little pot of gold that you can decide. Okay, I want to spend ten G's to get a car. I want to have this to buy whatever. You got an advantage. That we are not used to, accustomed to having. Yes. I didn't have that. You know what I mean? But they got a, a mini pot of gold for them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At some age, but yeah, so I'm, at least I'm on, on that arc. That's what, I mean, that's something that they can go on, you know, when they have families, and that's something that they can take with them. And something else is, that's really important, life insurance. Woo! You know what I mean? That's, that's really a, a lot, a lot of a lot of a lot of folks, especially white people, that's how they that's they come up. Yes, you know I was just about to say that. that. Speak Again, on it. So, like, like it's multiple it's multiple come ups, right? That I, you know, that I have actually been investing in. That you know, it it never happened for me. I wasn't taught that, but I, you know, that was information that I gathered. You know, uh, uh, life experience, living, right? You know what I mean, but. Yeah, so I'm into that, and I am going to look into that targeted IRA, IRA just to see if it's more advantages as I can get in that as well. But mm -hmm. again, like, and that's all I care about, right? Because whatever, and that, that's where, you know, and like I said before, that's where, you know, uh, uh, it takes community. This is me, me and my wife, a small community, but it's take us to show them something and hopefully they'll be able to expand on what we showed them like for me I was able to explore that mom my mama and daddy had mm -hmm. they gave me the knowledge they didn't, they didn't have the resources mm -hmm. to know where to get the funds or know where to use the funds but for me that's what I'm trying to do because mm -hmm. I was able to move further than they were able to move Mm -hmm. And I'm just expecting that that's the knowledge that I'm giving them, but I'm just saying that's a that's a piece of something that I'm you know what I mean they future. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. And to uh double down on what Trey said, he right, man. I remember I can't remember his name, it don't really don't make a difference. Cossum. His name is Cossum. Cossum told me he was like, Hey B, uh you know, he was talking about somebody in his family just transferred like a grandparent. Or uncle had just transitioned in his family, right? And with that, he was like, hey, man, uh, I'm, I'm about to run into a whole lot of money. And I'm like, huh? He was like, man, this is what we do. Uh, we invest, in, uh, like eight of us, invest in a million-dollar life insurance policy for the eldest, oldest person in our family. And when they transition, we get like a million and some change of non-taxable money. And I'm like, what? He was like, I know it sounds morbid, but and, and he was like, hey man, it's my turn this time. This cat finna get a hundred k 
and he took off. Now he owned a couple trucks, and he doing it. So we looking at it like, man, you gonna profit off your grandmama death, and and other cultures like, yeah, yeah, hey, hey yeah. yeah, I ain't finna cry, cause I'm finna hit a lick. And yeah. last time I talked to him, my man rolling slick and owned three or four trucks. He got a slick ass crib up in Skokie. And it's like, damn. And you know, it ain't like I hope that big lamb somebody die in my family, but I'm just like, damn. These are these are resources that, man, you know, we need again, we need to hold ourselves accountable so poverty isn't a generational curse. Cause poverty is that curse. And it, man, thank you, Chan, for bringing it up. And I man, man, exactly, man. We have to be accountable for our future. Now, with that being said, we're going to talk about the past now. This accountability have an expiration date. And what I mean by that is if I do something in 19, anything, because it's the year 2000, we two decades into no 19s. If I do something in the past, how long should that be held over my head? We're going to go Kev. You know what? Since she's been biting off everybody. No, I'm just playing. Charlotte first, and then Kev, then Trent. <laughs> what was that comment, Mr. Williams? Uh, I don't What's remember saying? saying nothing. I don't remember saying nothing. Leave her alone, bro. What's wrong, man? No, she said it. She said it. I know it's going to sound like I was stealing from everybody. <laughs> I had to. I'm B. Y'all know I'm B. I had to. I couldn't let that one slide. Um, but no, I don't think accountability has an expiration date until you correct mm. the wrong that you did. I feel like um, if, if you did something and you know you did something um, and you don't make amends, it's going to sit there until you mm. and sincerely make amends. Don't just uh, pacify your actions, whatever you did, um, and I and I truly believe that. I feel like um, you know we're created to do good, and if we don't, it's gonna come back, and we're gonna suffer the consequences of that. So I feel like no, accountability does not have an expiration date until you you fix what you're accountable for. Kev. Trey, it's on you, Trey. So it's kind of like my answer might be a little, yeah, my answer might be a little bit, uh, you know, two-sided, right? Because all I can go on is like, you know, when I was 18, I got locked up, I was dealing some drugs, whatever. I, I did my little probation, you know, whatever. Right, but then when I was 29, and you know, just you know, got a degree, 
no matter what else you did and how past that point you've been, but then at the same time, they want to tell you, well, people change. Well, I changed. <laughs> I was 18 when it happened. I'm 50 now. So when is when is, when are y'all going to change the way y'all view me, <laughs> right? You know, but that, 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 that still hasn't stopped me from doing anything, right? That, that, that still didn't uh, uh, break my spirit because I understood, you know, the person that I was. And it always goes back to who I taught, I, you know, who I was taught I was, you know, and what was put into me when my parents and my grandmother and my aunts and my uncles and everybody in the family put into me. They gave me enough to know that, you know, okay, yeah, I, I fucked up. And I paid for when I, when I, you know, when I effed up, right? But either y'all going to still keep on charging me, that's fine, but that's not going to stop me from moving forward. You know, that's personal accountability, though. I mean, for that, it ain't, it, that never stops. You know what I mean? But I think it should be, if you make a mistake, you how long can you really be held accountable for that mistake after you already paid for that mistake, right? Like, it's got to be some balance somewhere, right? But I say personal responsibility is up to the individual to rectify that situation somehow if they can, right? You know, at least you know, have an understanding with, with the higher power, you know what I mean, uh, something, but, you know, it, it seems like, you know, especially for personal accountability, like I say, I'm going to always stand on that, you're going to have to stand up to whatever it was you said, or whatever it was you did, and whatever consequences come with that, that's what it is, so that's why even, it was frustrating, but they was coming to me with these conversations, you know, re- asking about what happened and what I did, you know, no, I already answered them questions, but now I got to answer them again and satisfy, you know, you to want to hire me, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's weird how that works, but like I say, for me, personal accountability just lasts as long until the, the, the individual involved rectifies the situation, if it can be rectified in any way, you know, at least get it right with God. You know what I mean? And the other part of it, this is what they're going to do. They're going to, you know, if they, they got something on you, they're going to hold it over your head for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? And you just can't let that be a, a, a barrier to stop you from, from moving forward. So, and that's where it's even more accountability because you can't let that define who you are. And I just didn't let that, even though it, it felt bad because I seen guys, right? I was on the Dean's list. You know, I did. I did good. I did good. I made. I made my mama proud. So that was that was my uh, accountability for the time I messed up when I was young. You know what I mean? I did. That was my personal accountability for me to rectify all that. You know what I mean? And then when I get to where I'm supposed to be now, I see people around me that's not on the things list. I don't have a got at least a C average, right? They getting offers, they going into that room over there, and they holding me back like, oh, no, well, security is going to call you, and uh, I'm like, what? Security going to call me? But the dude got the average? Something ain't right here. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was held accountable, you know, and was willing to, okay, i eat that. I got to do better than everybody else because I know I got some blemishes on me that's going to make people look at me a little bit harder. Right? So I did that. But at the same time, I still got to deal with that. You know what I mean? And I already did my part. I I was on probation. I had to go, you know, to go see my probation officer and do all that extra ridiculous stuff. Right? And that, that thing is still on me. Like, uh, I want to go get me a, uh, uh, go get my, uh, you know, be able to conceal carry. But I got a damn felony. So guess what? I got a, I, I got a strap. If somebody run up on me, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be pretty. You know what I'm saying? I'll be the black uh cow written house if I have to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? You know what I'm saying? It don't that don't matter. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live. And we could deal with all the rest of the details later. But I'm just saying, like on some real for me, I'm pushing through it. I don't even care about nothing. I did what I had to do and I just feel like, man. The, uh, the universe is going to make sure I get what I need because I did I did my part and I I paid for all my sins, period. You know what I'm saying? So whatever else, and I never feel like a victim because I know what I did, right? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I got to pay for it. That's fine. But you can't make me pay two times, three times. You know what I mean? So for me, personal accountability, it lasts till... It, it's not there no more. You know what I mean? To you, to you are accountable for, for your own actions for you, not because somebody making you be, but to understand
God has called you to stop trying to do what you know that you need to be doing, mm-hmm. right? So, but your personal accountability won't let that, won't let them stop you from doing what you have to do. Amen. If that make any sense. Now, that makes perfect sense. It, 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 I, it, I spoke about that Tuesday, as a matter of fact. I was like, hey, man, you can't keep, you You know, the only way to move forward is to move, I mean, go forward is to move forward. If you keep reading that last chapter, you ain't never going to write the next one. So that was pretty much what you were saying. And believe it or not, well, you you, you listen to the show, well, the people who are new to the show, believe it or not, what, what Tran just said is my life's work. I want to make it so if I committed a crime when I was 18, if I committed a crime when I was 30, it shouldn't be on my name when I'm 50 if I'm a law-abiding citizen. If you are going to hold this over my head into perpetuity, leave me locked up then. Because if they, if you're never going to let me escape a mistake, then leave me in the damn box. Because then I can't, you, 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 you're just trying to hamper. You see, I believe this is why that movement, and again, don't get people who love the major and the minors, don't get it confused what I'm saying. The whole Me Too movement, I think it started off with that sister from the Bronx. And she was like, I've been assaulted. And now they use it. They've weaponized her movement and made it so that contributes more and more to this civil war. And really, I believe they created a civil war between black men and black women. So we we talking in two different directions. Black men talking going to the east and black women talking going to the west. So we got to go around the whole damn world to get the understanding when we can just turn, we back to back. All we have to do is turn around and talk. But the accountability, how that ties into accountability is like this. We, the, the Me Too thing is digging up stuff uh, that, that we're calling offenses from Eddie Murphy in 1982 with Delirious. Well, he said faggot. Well, knock it off because if that's the case, y'all gonna have to clear out Congress because most of those dudes in Congress either sexually assaulted somebody or said the word nigga. You can, you can bet your last dollar on that. You would have to clear out all branches of government if we held people accountable for what they said 30 years. As a matter of fact, the dude who's the president of the United States of America in 1988 stood in front of the world and said, hey, if Haiti sunk into the ocean, who would care? But he leader, leader of the free world. He said that. So he just said, F all those Negroes down there. So I believe, and I'm not, not holding him accountable for that. I'm not saying, oh, man, he should be in the slide for that. Because, see, you did. it's a difference in an offense like what my man did. Okay, he put it... He, Trent made a decision at age 18 that it might we it ain't wasn't the best or a worst decision. It was just a decision that he's paying for now. Something of that nature at age 18, nobody should be paying for it when they're 39, 49, and 50 years old. Nobody. But Joe Biden said that when he was 40. So, and let's not forget, he used to hang out with this dude by the name of Strom Thurmond. Strong Thurman was one of the biggest bigots in the history of our, our modern government. So when you're hanging out with a racist and then you say a, a, a island of black people should sink into the ocean, eh, you might just be racist. I'm just saying. I'm not going to call you a racist, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. li- like Stephen A. Smith say, now, this is two shows in a row. I done quoted Stephen A. If you walk like a duck and talk like a duck, it ain't a damn mongoose. So, but when you're looking at, 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 at this cancel culture, and, and Kevin Hart, you saw the context and what he was saying. But it can't be a joke anymore. Dave Chappelle is clearly trolling. He is clearly trolling this community. And, and let's cancel him. And like Big Illinois said, cancel Quentin Tarantino, Scorsese, and Kubrick for all the unnecessary use of the word, the N-word. If you want to cancel somebody, cancel, you know, but see, the thing is, man, I believe you shouldn't be held accountable for things that were said in jest, mistakes as a youth, mistakes in general. You know, okay, I, I don't want to use this term, but I'm going to use it. Victimless crime mistakes. Like, Tran and myself, I'm going to admit it, Tran and myself are the same guy. Only difference in me and Tran is the police caught up with Tran. They didn't catch up with me. 
So am I better than Tran? No, I'm not. We the same dudes. If you if you lie all the time, and this guy lies once and get and gets caught, y'all still the same liar. He just got caught in his lie. And people are trying to hold people's feet to the fire into perpetuity, and that's just not realistic to do. And that's why I said, man, this is another thing that goes back to the first question. What do we need to do? Because guess what? If Trent is in the IT world, if I had an a, a IT company or had, if I was an IT contractor with somebody big, like, uh, who was that? Uh, Angus, Angus? Or uh, uh, they, uh, 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 I can't think of the name of this. It's a smaller community, uh, computer company, but they really just make chips, and then they expanded to making laptops and, and desktops. If I, why don't we just do that, and then and then start shipping stuff to Microsoft, and then we don't need Mike, we don't need to work at Microsoft. You can work with H Rap Technologies, and then we can focus on. See, we can focus on the trans and on. God rest his soul, my cousin Vincent. Two extremely intelligent people, two extreme, uh, uh, Aces. That's what it is, Aces. They just used to make microchip. Right. Now they make computers. So if we create our own Aces, thanks, thanks, Aunt Big Illinois, thanks. Uh, uh, if we start, if we create our own Aces, we ain't have to worry about that. Because then, uh, 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 we can do what we need to do, but we not doing that. We going, hey, hey, Let's go get a job at IBM instead of making our own fucking IBM. And that's the problem. We keep trying to assimilate. And until we do our own thing, we we'll continue to be subject to everybody else's tyranny. Because everybody on this screen has done way more than they had to. And then you watch the 30% special needs dude over here get the job. And I can even take it back to my collection career. It was this cat. I ain't gonna say his name. He might be listening. He's one of my Facebook friends. But he beat me by 30K one month. And that check that he beat me by is still bouncing. And he got a promotion off of it. And when I finally got the promotion, when I finally got the promotion, I became the number one supervisor in the United States of America. So how did you beat me? It's the good old boy network. We keep playing their game and keep losing at that game. We have to, we have to do like, what's the white boy name that killed himself? Mac Miller, he created his own lane. And then, like, it's, it, it's everything that we talked about tonight ties in. If we support each other, we don't need any, we don't need any Grammys, we don't need any Oscars, we don't need Microsoft or, or Intel or, or, or Apple or anybody to uh, uh, support us because we'll do it. And that's what a true accountability is. We need to do what we need to do to make things possible. Oh, uh, Aunt <laughs> said, Tran is cool, but you suck. <laughs> I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> Last question of the Fuck night. <laughs> Last question of the night. Uh, how should we hold public fig uh, public figures? accountable uh you know politicians that are not doing their job celebrities that we get behind full steam and they don't do anything for the hood where what is it that we should be saying you need what should we be asking these people for or should we be asking them for anything trans shot or kevin for the community. 
guys are entertaining, they can jump high, they a good sports player, they can sing, they can dance, whatever. Like them for that. But beyond that, you don't know them. Don't idolize them, don't put any extra feeling or any extra energy into who they are. Like what they do, and that's where it ends. Like you can like a you can like a racist white person for what they do. You don't have to like them personally, right? You can like anybody. You can like a killer. I know killers that I'm cool with. Right? Right? I don't like the fact that they killed, but okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't idolize them. I know and when we had them type of conversations, nah nigga, you in jail because that's what you act. You put your I don't, don't want to hear all of you know, the circumstances around how you got arrested, who did what it, who said it, blah. So, no, you there because you put yourself there. And these are the conversations I have with my guys. And these are my guys, right? I still got love for them, but I still understand they did the most bogus shit that you could possibly ever do in a lifetime. And you got caught for it, and you serving your time for that. We ain't gonna have, me and you ain't gonna have a conversation that's gonna away from that. I'm going to remind you anytime that you try to go that way. No, you the one that's in jail. Not me. I don't work, you know, if you want me to do something for you, help you out, and I'll put money on your books and do just because you my guy. I don't have to agree with what you did and if be circumstances around it. Yeah, it ain't understandable, but don't stop blaming nobody else. Right? Eat that. Every time that good, that's that account.
I can say about politicians, even though somehow in the back of my mind, um, and it could be the electoral college. I don't know what it is, but I still, I don't want to be the Debbie Downer and say our vote don't count. But I still feel like there's some rigging, some behind the scenes things going on with elections and politicians who are put in those positions as well. But in terms of what we can do, we can definitely get in that line and cast our ballot, right? To say at least we tried, we did our part. Um, in terms of celebrities and pro athletes, I completely agree with Tran. You know, we need to stop thinking um, that they owe us. But we also had this conversation before. We also make them right with our dollars again so it's kind of like a little circle there so um we definitely should not be putting them on these pedestals as if just because they're in the spotlight they're better than the rest of us which goes back to raider kev saying we all need to recognize the power that we all have as individuals in our own self-worth in our own value not just to ourselves and our family and our loved ones but even in this platform as Brian, you have said many times, right? Our goal is to uplift our community and our people. Um, and so in that respect, the fact that um, I think going back to even to my upbringing with my parents and just, again, learning, right? So if I know something, I'm not gonna keep it to myself. I have to share it, especially if it's something that's gonna uplift or help other people. That's just who I am. If I have it, you have it. If I know it, you know it. Um, and so, um, yeah, that that thinking of some people are better than others, that, that doesn't fly, right? We're all equal. We're all human. We're all created the same. Um, so in terms of always expecting things or expecting better out of people, again, because they're on that platform or they have that spotlight, that does need to stop. Um and again, we've also had this conversation with some celebrities giving back to our community in a public way, you know, in a generous way. Um, and that's a good thing. So we don't want to stop that. Um, so it is it's kind of like, you know, a battle back and forth between, yes, we want them, you know, to give back because they have it just like we would do. Um, but we need to stop putting them on the pedestal or expecting them to, right? Because they really don't have to, as Tran said, you know, an actor, that's his job. He's supposed to, you know, do that or whatever. He entertains us, so we pay him for that entertainment, just like we pay these other businesses. So um, those are my thoughts. Ready, Kev.
on vocal and, and he's out there with all his work, right? Those examples, I don't like people doing things in the dark. Let's, ex let's expose what you do. Expose how it should be done. Because when you expose it, it gives another person an opportunity to say, you know what? That was positive. My man, uh, I, I land somewhere in the middle of all three of y'all. Right. Politicians, they shouldn't be held accountable. The people should be. Because their job is to lie to get where they want to be. See, well, and the people in our community, I can't speak to nobody, about nobody else's community. I don't think we're civically active enough. And that's why they can skate and promise us BS. And then they like, like, like people, like, people love getting on Barack Obama. Or he ain't doing nothing for, for the brothers. If it goes back to the beginning when I said, we, we, remember we talk about how we don't know history. In 1965, the Civil Rights Act was signed. Dr. King was right back in Lyndon Baines Johnson's face in 66 saying, we need this too though. He said, I just did this last year. He said, yeah, that was last year, but we need this today. Barack Obama, they asked him a question. I don't remember what the, exactly what the question was. His response was, they got to make me do it. And that's what Lyndon Baines, Baines Johnson and, and A. Philip Randolph, he told the president that. And the president said, you got to make me do it. And Lyndon ba and, and Dr. King and A. Philip Randolph got what they wanted. I'm not saying that these, these dudes in these suits, these lying dudes in the suits are not, a, not accountable. But I, again, it goes back to us. We would, I would cuss out, I, even though this is a fictitious thing and it means nothing to you, Randy Kelly. Charlotte and everybody in Chicago, this is going to mean something. To I cuss everybody in the world out about Harold Washington. Harold Washington didn't do this and Harold Washington didn't do that. But that's all we're going to do. I'm only going to tell it to Tran. I'm only going to tell it to Charlotte. I'm only going to tell it to Big Illinois. For the record, Harold Washington was the first and the greatest mayor and the first black man, the greatest mayor in the history of Chicago. But we'll complain about Harold, even though most people didn't complain about Harold. For the record, he was excellent. No no kid. I'm not saying that because he a brother, but Harold Washington, just for side note for people that don't know Harold Washington, Chicago is one of the most, people call Chicago the windy city. It's not because of the weather. It's because the, the smoke that they blow up your behind. That is a that is a true statement. That's why it's called the windy city because they blow, politicians blow smoke up your behind. They blow, you know, and that's what they call it the windy city. Harold Washington, was, they, the city council used to be called the machine. If you lived in a black neighborhood, it was a white representative. All your state reps were white. And they called it the machine. So they homies, they was, it was just cronyism all over the city. Harold Washington stepped up and, and changed that whole get down. To the point where Kev and the other people outside of Chicago, um, state representative... Gutierrez was placed in, put in play by Harold Washington back in the 80s. He just retired last year. So that's why I'm saying, that's why I had to get blood of Harold Washington. But I'm just using him. But see, we'll complain about Harold to train the Charlotte and Big Illinois, but we won't go to city council meetings. We won't sweat the hell out. Like, we, the one thing, like see, we had the privilege of being, and especially Tran, we could touch our alderman. Our alderman is now the Secretary of State of Illinois. When he see Tran, he says, how you doing, Tran? When he see, are you doing, Brian? He know us. So we had a, a true advantage. But by and large, we don't complain to him. We complain to Tran. Man, Mr. White didn't do this. Did you ask him? No. Well, he looked out for me. Well, you know him. No. We got, that's why I said, First, we got to hold ourselves accountable. Like Tran said, 
oh man, see the DA did this. Did you kill that dude? Yeah, but the DA, no, no, no. Did you did you complain to your alderman, your state rep, your mayor, your governor, your senators? Because the president is nobody in the state of Illinois. Because guess what, people? If y'all don't believe the president means nothing to the state of Illinois, in Massachusetts and the state of Illinois, you can go to a corner emporium and buy some marijuana and fire it up in front of the police. But guess what? It's against federal law to sell and use Marijuana. So how that lets you know, stop talking about this president and start talking about your reps, your aldermen, your city council people, your mayor, and your governor. Because those are the people that count. And how, it get, look, look, people, for those for the record, guess how, I don't even live in Massachusetts, but guess how you, you got to sell, you got to use marijuana freely, recreational marijuana in the state of Massachusetts and the state of Illinois. We voted on it. We said we finna smoke some weed. And we did it. I can't hear you, Tran. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hello. I saw your lips moving. Uh oh, he talking to somebody else. Oh, so these this is why I said we gotta hold ourselves accountable first. Because if we voted for legalized marijuana and did it. What the hell we mean the politicians didn't do it? We run them. They not our homies. They not our friends. They are their job is civil servant. What's another word for sl servant? Slave. What do the slaves have to do? What the people do? What the people say do? Or we can't whip them and beat them, but we can. Hey, the unemployment is high. Well, it's gonna be one percent higher when, at, when election day. Because your ass finna join the unemployed. You finna go back to doing whatever you was doing before we elected you. You, you, you was working at the law firm or such and such and such and such. See if your desk's still empty because you out of here. And in regards to celebrities, I somewhat agree with Ray to Kev and I somewhat agree with Trey and Charlotte. I think the only way we can really... Y'all right. They celebrities. All we pay them to do is... You know, hey, hey, dance, moonwalk, sing, act. That's all we act. That's all we pay them to do. So that's all they're obligated to do. But again, if we are going to sign up with these people, how about we start doing this? Yo, Tran, you're a super dope MC. You be rapping about this. You be rapping about this. What you gonna do for the people? Oh man, that ain't my get down. Now, if he, if you don't like his answer, don't buy no more his damn music. But don't wait for him to blow up and then say. Hey, hey, I supported you. Well, I ain't tell you I was going to fix shit. I did fix some, a plate at my house, at my big pretty house, and I fixed up my car, and I fixed up my jewelry game, and, I, and I'm kicking, I'm fixing it up with these ladies. I'm fixed. Uh, my pockets was broke, and they fixed now. See, again, we must get ahead of these things. And how about this? If we get ahead of these things, how about this? The, the, the original point of accountability if everybody said the same thing let's talk to our kids first so it's a Derrick Rose on the south side and on the west side of Chicago somewhere in Chicago it's another Derrick Rose if we all talking to that Derrick Rose hey man if you blow up you gotta help out the people man you you at Jabari Park it's a it's a it's an Anthony Davis in Chicago it's another Derrick Rose in Chicago it's another Patrick Beverly in Chicago it's another Jabari Park and they, hey won't you hey this is what you do when you blow up and put the seeds of improving home and the community in their head. Don't wait till you blow up. Because guess what? If you put those seeds there, just imagine if he don't become the next LeBron James. But he could. Maybe we can inspire him to become the next Doc Rivers. Or the next, next Maverick Carter. Or the next Spike Lee. Or the next whoever who's going to give back to the community. Because that's what's in their heart. Because if we, we got to raise them to be that. So... Y'all right, they don't owe us nothing, but we do want them to help. And with that being said, if anybody else got any closing uh, uh, closing remarks. So all I was saying was on, uh, the, the thing with the uh, the wheat. It was a, a question on, the, like, three questions about it, right? See, see. Uh, yeah, referendums. They call it referendums. Yep. Here. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they call them now. 
Exactly. Yes, no, yes, no, whatever. And my thing was, because I didn't even understand. I'm like, hell no, they, I'm going to vote for, yeah, we we should be out illegally smoke weed, right? I've been smoking it illegally for a <laughs> long, so yeah, it should be legal. So I'm thinking it's just me. But when they came out with the, oh, weed is going to be legal. Everybody smoke weed. Right, that's something that everybody do. So what you're saying is, and, and that's another thing, just like, you know, just like my man was talking about, like, we don't, we might not necessarily have all, like, understand all politics, because I never understood it all, but I always felt like, just from the way I was raised, that I had to vote, no matter what. I just felt that way. Like, it was an obligation. Once, once I was of uh, uh, legal age to vote, that was the first thing I did, registered and went to vote. I ain't know nobody on the ballot. I who black? What's the black one? I'm gonna vote for the black one, right? You know what I'm saying? But I never like, and that's something that, you know, we probably have to do a better job of, but we got so much uh, skepticism as far as politics go. Come on. Oh, I don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. They liar. They lie. They that's that's their job is to lie to get to where they want to go. That's mm-hmm. clear. Everybody. You know what I'm saying? And it, every year it gets more clearer. And they only lie to get your vote, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, civically, we don't, we not as, uh, you know, in tune. Well, at least I know I wasn't. And my mother and father never told me that. But I just felt like, well, you know, black people done struggled enough to get, you know, to even be able to have the right to vote. So I feel like I have to vote. Mm-hmm. So that's how it's always been for me. I've mm-hmm. never missed an election, like not a major one. I mm-hmm. voted for every mayor in Chicago. I voted for every governor when I was there, and I voted for every president since I could vote. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I did. Even mm-hmm. though I ain't know half the people, and I ain't put no time into understanding who all these people were that I was voting for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know Jesse White. I'm gonna vote for him every time. I know Burnett. I'm gonna vote for him every time. Right? And certain people I know, I'm gonna vote for them if I see their name right there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's probably something we got to do a better job of. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. like, if you really don't believe in the process, how can you make somebody else believe in that process? Somebody or some something made me believe in that process. And that's all I can tell my kids. Hey, you need to vote, right? And they can be, why? <laughs> well, you need to, you know, you have a, 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 a say in, you know, some of the things that happen around you. Right, mm-hmm. and that's the most important thing. Regardless how corrupt they are on the top, you know, I still vote, knowing it's all corrupt, and knowing these people are just lying to me. And I just go with my preference. But you know, the the the, 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 the thing about you know having civic knowledge and understanding the whole process and everything that go on, I never understood all of it. But I do at this point. I know that that's all they do is lie to get to where they're trying to go. Like it's it's, it's ridiculous. But I, I still go go and vote, right? If I don't support you, I you know, and I ain't necessarily always voting just all Democratic or all whatever. I'm voting on my preference, right? And that's all I could do. I didn't have my chance to let my voice be heard. I did my part, right? And I feel better after I do it, regardless of whatever the situation. Even if I think it don't even matter, it don't even have to matter. I still did my part, so. I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with, you know, my actions that I took, you know what I mean? But I, in the end, it come back down to you feeling that you have to go do it or you feeling that your voice counts. And that's, even though if, if it don't or if it do, it don't matter. I'm still going, you know, in my mind, my voice, at least I I put my voice, my vote in and wherever it go for me, I did my part. If the guy I wanted to win didn't win, it ain't my fault. He wasn't enough people behind him. He was a bad candidate, blah, blah, blah. But that part of it, and how can it really be serious when I don't even take it serious? But I still go vote every time. But I would tell my, you know, I'm teaching my kids the same thing. You have to vote. You know what I'm saying? Only thing that's I- what it is. Like, only- but it, it, it got to be something, again, it start with us, right? It don't start with outside forces. It start right here in the home. Well, we are the ones that teach the kids what's important and what's not and let them go because, again, and that's all I can ever go back to is what I got from my parents. I don't ever remember them telling me, hey, you better go vote. But I remember feeling like I had to go vote when it was when I was of age. And I've been voting ever since, regardless how I feel about the, the uh, 
Can the, the setup for the situation. Only thing I add to that, Tran, so is this. That's all I can do. Only thing I add to that is, voting is just the first step, though. You got to complain. You have. I've never complained. Right. We, because, okay, if Bozo the Clown get promoted, I mean, uh, elected as the mayor, you need to be on his ass. It, uh, I wanted yeah. Cookie to win. Well, Cookie didn't win. You just going to do what I was going to ask Cookie to do. You going to do it. And that's where we fall off at. That's, you don't have to know anything about politics or the civic inner workings of politics, but you need to know this, one thing. Voting is one, is one day every four to six years. Those other days, if it's, six, if it's four years, that's a thousand days, and I'm gonna, you know, 1,200 days or whatever, them other days, you need to be standing on their necks. The easy thing is to vote. The hard thing is to pay attention and be on their ass. Would that be, ready to care, Rashad, y'all got anything to say before we go? Yeah, can I add something? Yeah. He pointless. Charlotte? Uh, the only final thought I want to add is to remember that no action is an action. So when you think you're standing on the side and you're not doing anything but not saying anything, you really are. So everything that we do or don't do has an impact. So we need to be mindful of that. And again, um, I think what everybody said on the panel tonight um, about holding ourselves accountable and accountability starting with us. Um, I, I feel like we say that every show and that Brian says that every show that we need to, you know, wake up and start putting some action behind these things if we actually want to see change. Remember, people, five calls. That's an app. Download it. It'll put you in direct connection with five people in your government. Download it, please. If you, look, let's just be honest. Ain't Most of us ain't going nowhere. We ain't even moving to the next zip code. We ain't moving from Chicago to Hammond. We ain't going up to damn Milwaukee. We ain't going over to Kansas City. We ain't going to Iowa City. We ain't moving to St. Louis or Memphis. And everybody else, most of y'all ain't moving. So let's, let's kill that. We need to move to Africa, man. Okay. You don't even live on Africa Street. So seeing how you ain't moving nowhere, you better get involved or, and, and, and you ain't finna take over the government either because if they can blow up Japan, they will blow your ass up too. So, <laughs> so either you get involved, like the Marines, leave, follow, get the hell out the way. Leave, follow, or get the hell out the way. All these Delusions of grandeur. I'm going to take over the world. Hey, man, I'm save about $400,000, and then I'm going to the moon. Get the... Stop. You're not doing that. 
knock it off. But what you can do is make your community and the people who uh, 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 who are part of your community and the people part of your family. And look, I ain't even gonna say that. I'm gonna say that for my Tuesday show because that's 100% my. But I was gonna get y'all some of the H rap. This is the Brian and the, and the friends show. I feel, now, uh, with that being said, man, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank y'all for supporting at all times. Hit the like button, hit the share button, subscribe, please, on YouTube and on Built for This Network. And um, I, I, I'm on Charlotte, and uh, uh, I want everybody to stay back for like two minutes after the uh, closing song stop because I want to ask y'all a question. But as as far as as of now, I see y'all on this platform in two weeks because I don't, I know ain't nobody really trying to do nothing Thanksgiving. That trick the fan been kicked in. It's over. But uh, uh, with that being said, man, like I always salute Combat Jack by saying, dream those dreams and man up and woman up and live those dreams. Because life without dreams flows in black and white. Life with dreams flows in technicolor and surround sound. And I'm going to say something that uh, I heard today. Build what you want and, and uh, build what you want and what you can control. Don't deviate from the earth. The earth is balance. You are the balance. That's from that's from Egyptian. The Egyptians said that. Now nope, you are the balance. So don't deviate from the earth. With that being said, man, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. This is HYB. This is Built for This Network. This is the End of the Bench podcast, Build and Destroy, where we attempt to build up the community and destroy anything else. I need y'all to hold up for about. 90 seconds and I'll be right back but for the listeners. Thank you and good night. We lust for that cheese. We lose sleep. Dreams of that clean. We killing our teams. They down for this American dream. Them government schemes. They turning us to hustlers and beans. We hustling trees. Them politicians smuggling green. Chasing that cheese. Got everybody stressed in the streets. Water me for speaking freely. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. Evangelists preach. The congregations out of their seats. They writing them checks for tiles. Now as people can't eat. She's stripping for change for school. Now she giving a brain. She's used to that loot. She earned it. Now she giving them strain. He moved to this game. But hungry. So he's looking his cane. He getting that paper. But then they gave him tools to the brain. There's rules to this game. But hustlers never hustle for fame. The spirit of greed is grimy. So we struggle to change. They put us in chains. And take away our African names. But if we submissive. But don't resist. And who do we blame? It's all a game. Man, it's your opinion. Staking they claim. And you a victim of the game plan. You thinking they ain't. You thinking they saints. Remember all them niggas they hang. Killed our women and our children. All our leaders are slain They gave us Obama But that nigga was hoping for change But Zimmerman is killing niggas And he free And he free Shit is crazy Babies having these babies And getting checked But keep a child from They popped the victor's heart out his chest Our rappers was leaders And now they in the booth And the dress Spitting bullshit And making more But giving us less They taking our sound And changing ours Dumbing it down They taking our jobs and homes And they shutting us out They taking our kids Because it ain't a man in the house They locking us down But soon they gonna be Wiping us out They told our women They was two and they it to me, the man told my brother he was too insignificant to advance. It's all a game, man. It's European staking they claim that you a victim of the game plan. You thinking they ain't? You thinking they saints? Remember all them niggas they hang? Killed our women and our children, all our leaders are slain. It's all a game. We are built for the network, for the strong, not the weak.